Hi, today's subject is false authority, bullshit, misinformation, and how it's spread using some of the character flaws found in many good human beings in the workforce across North America. See, as people, we feel a little insecure when we don't know something. We are not comfortable with saying, I don't know, in a lot of situations. So we seek to be as informed as humanly possible. At the same time, we are also very fucking lazy. So what happens is when we don't know something, if somebody pretends to be an authority on the subject and they speak authoritatively and they change their voice while they're talking to you and they really get into it, we're actually inclined to believe that person even if what they're talking about is just complete fucking horseshit that makes no goddamn sense. And the thing is, since we don't often have the motivation to go out on our own and find out whether or not this information is true, we will often take that information at face value and consider it as fact if the source sounds like they know what they're talking about. And this is very, very dangerous. And this happens every day at little bumblefuck businesses like the bodega on the corner in Bed-Stuy near my apartment. And it happens at large multinational corporations that employ hundreds of thousands of people. How does this happen? I'm going to get into that a little bit in this video. As I said, people do not like not knowing something. They do not like feeling like they do not know something. A lot of people that I have dealt with, a lot of people I've hired, a lot of people that I've worked for feel very uncomfortable saying, I don't know. Those three words can never come out of your mouth, I'd hear them say. And I say that all the time because it allows me the opportunity to learn something new. I do not know everything. So I'm open to the idea of learning. I don't care if what I'm learning, I'm learning from an esteemed college professor, and I don't care if what I'm learning, I'm learning from a five-year-old child that just so happens to be a, a, you know, a PHP nerd or something that knows more than me. I'll take good information from whatever source it comes from. But one of the things that I always do is double check my information. I don't allow internal politics of an organization that I'm involved with or the politics of another organization or body to determine whether or not I'm going to take this information a little bit more seriously. I always double check information if I feel that it's worth being committed to memory. Here is a good example. In the studio world, there was this one engineer who knew absolutely nothing about digital recording. He only knew about analog recording, and he was really good at it. Now, he was willing to take somebody else's advice on choosing uh, digital to analog and analog to digital converters for his studio. So, he asked some whiz kid from Full Sail, who seemed to know all the, how all the digital stuff worked, and the kid said something like, you should really get a DigiDesign 888. They're the best, they sound amazing, uh, the clock inside is really what makes it different, and they have this feature, and this is where the real bullshit comes in if you work in audio, where you're just gonna start fucking laughing, and saying that just how ridiculous Full Sail is as an audio school. They said that the clock rate, uh, or the sampling rate, automatically changes based on the type of music going through, which is just such fucking bullshit that is beyond comprehension. But since the kid was talking like this, and he was actually showing him all the little individual components and citing these forums where he had heard this before, and he really was talking like he knew his stuff. Uh, the, the, the old knowledgeable dude believed him and was using these 888s for the recording. Now, can you make a good recording with DigiDesign 888s? Yes. Are DigiDesign 888s known as some of the worst digital to analog and analog to digital converters of the 21st century. Yes, they are. The converters inside of this little $100 JVC Aereo camera are probably better than the converters in that piece of fucking dog shit. This is not even a subjective thing like do I like Neumann microphones or do I like AKG microphones. This is something where if you take 30 audio engineers and you put them in a room, you will have 30 people who agree with you that you really don't want to record music on a DigiDesign 888 unless there is absolutely nothing else available other than like the glass cutting lathe. And even then, I may just take the glass cutting lathe. And the thing is, the reason that he took this guy seriously was because he seemed like he knew more. And also, this kid, while being a complete and utter fuckwit, did an excellent job at the organization. He looked like he cared all the time. He cleaned the toilets. He redid the wiring. He was there early. He stayed late. He earned uh, the, the respect. So this guy figured, he's earned my respect. I might as well listen to him. 
and see what the problem is when we take that type of politics into consideration when considering whether or not to take a piece of information and consider it true. The problem is that things that have nothing to do with the information are now considered when debating whether or not this is a fact or whether this is bullshit. He came early and left late, therefore I will listen to this bullshit information on a sampling rate changing automatically. He cleaned the toilets when nobody else did, therefore I listened to him. He was respectful, therefore I listened to him. And the problem is, there are a lot of people out there that are insecure. There are a lot of people out there in this world that are manipulative. And there are a lot of people that will use their position to further uh, their information when that information is not at all true. So people within an organization may say, hey, we'll take a real shine to somebody even though they are a complete and bumbling dumbass. And the problem with this is that that information will then be listened to. And if this is the type of person that seeks authority, they will seek a position based on the false information. Now what happens? Now you start basing your business model. You start basing your revenue streams. You start basing certifications or licensing on this base of bullshit information. So what happens? Now everything you're building, the licenses you're getting, the new revenue streams, the new ideas you have, you're basing on bullshit information. So all of this stuff that you're building is, can very easily come crumbling down because it is based on bullshit. And the problem here is that when people choose to not do their own research because they to feel weird about not knowing something and because they just want to learn as much as they can without actually doing the work involved to properly learn it, that allows this misinformation to spread like a cancer. And 30, 40, 50, even 20 years ago, I could understand this happening. But we live in an age where even if I'm in the middle of bumblefuck nowhere, I could pick up this $300 device and with a 6 megabit per second internet connection, do a damn good amount of research from credible sources to figure out if what I've been told makes sense or if it's total fucking bullshit. And very often you can say what you want about the internet, but if a piece of information is complete bullshit, there are a couple of people on this thing that are going to agree with me. And there are all a couple of people who may say, no. Now, my staff will occasionally ask me, why did you tell them that? They're the enemy, or why are you giving away this information? There's no need to. You're not benefiting anything. Well, yes, I am. One of my life goals is to, even if by a very, very small percentage, eliminate the amount of bullshit and misinformation that exists in the world. And I believe that the greatest enemy of bullshit and misinformation is the truth. So, if I tell more people the truth, that means that I'm doing damage to the misinformation. And hopefully that continues to happen. So hopefully there will be more good information in the world and less insecure, manipulative people spreading misinformation because of their own specific agendas. And I urge you to do as much of your own research as possible using whatever tool that you deem necessary. Whether you want to read books at the library, whether you want to consult with other individuals in your field or in the field that you're discussing, whether you just want to simply use your Google Voice activation and talk out the subject with your $300 tablet and your cheapo internet connection to get an answer. Do your own research. Do not trust that information is correct because it comes from your employee. Do not trust that information is correct because it comes from your boss. Do not trust that information is correct because it comes from somebody who I think I should trust because they've been doing a decent job. Don't trust information because it comes from me. Am I telling you that you should be a skeptic? That you should call people out and say, I'm not believing anything you're saying until I look it up. No. Be tactful about it. Think about it. But at the same time, take 20 seconds out of your day to do a little bit of research. It's, if you spent even 5% of the time that you spent making bullshit frivolous texts or reading Facebook or shopping for shit that you're never going to fucking check out for on the internet, just doing a little bit of your own original research, I guarantee that there would be a ridiculous amount of less bullshit in the world, that there would be a lot less misinformation, there would be a lot less failure, there would be a lot less misery, because the world would be just a little bit more of a truthful place. And I believe that that starts with me. 
which is why I look everything up when somebody tells me it and it's something that I want to know and it's why I'm making this video encouraging you to do the same.